Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm going to go over a couple of points that I'm going to talk about for my presentation. Uh, some basics is basically how I set this whole thing up. Small cell use for enterprise, some disadvantages, advantages, implementation, capacity examples, and uh, the summary. So, yeah, we started out with this. It's, it's as basic as it gets. What is this? Okay? Gas is an RF transport, okay? Put RF into the head end, you transport it via fiber or however, then you have remotes, you have coax, passes, antennas. Goal is coverage. Signal strength is how they measure that. You've got capacity, so you've got users and, and the type of speed supported with the different services. You have availability, so you have service providers. Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, Metro, whoever. Uh, and you've got connectivity. So you've got backhaul and you've got, uh, you've got internet. How does this all get back and get switched around? As I said before, I set it up with RF. So you've got the, let's call it the RF layer at the head end. Okay, you've got you got your head end for your DAS, you got fiber, again, that's a pass through. Whatever you put into the head end is going to go through the remote and then out to the antennas. So if you look at the RF layer, you've got your cell site, uh, some of the older systems, uh, you've got uh, all fair repeaters, you don't run from the roof, you bring it in. 0 to 33 dpm, let's say, comes out of there, goes into your uh, point of interface to your DAS. Depending on your DAS and the POI and the levels they support. You can support a regular old uh, GSM base station if those are still around. Uh, you can support a radio node like uh, ALU MCO, radio node like uh, ALU MRO at these different power levels. You have the newer stuff to DRFM, Nokia, 16 dBm. You have your Pento, the uh, variety of pentos that are out there, 24 to 27 or so uh, is what they're running at. And you've got other devices like SpiderCloud, uh, which uh, we've done an interoperability study with uh, with them up in Mass with Verizon. Again, you see the power levels on here, various levels. You've got your input to your, uh, to your DAS, and that really determines what you're able to send through. Um, you can do high power, low power, depending on the cards that are available. And again, whatever you put into your head end is a pass through out to your remotes and your antennas. So you can support Spider Cloud, Evento, radio nodes, big base station, or over the air through that same head end. Some of the disadvantages, and this is more about full cell itself. Uh, in the case of Spider Cloud, uh, no offense to them, I, I love their equipment. Uh, it's always going to be Ethernet. So if, if you do Spider Cloud in a, in a small venue or a small uh, small site, you're going to run you're going to run your Ethernet out there out to your small cell, okay? Uh, but you can also run your small cell into an active DAS, uh, which is where I'm going with this. Your uh, point of power over Internet or Ethernet is going to have distance limitations, like 30, uh, 300 feet or so. You've got lower power output. Uh, on some of these, uh, some of these small cells, your simultaneous users may be limited: 64, 128, 256. Your backhole requirement: uh, if you go with some of the uh, some of the Epento or Spider Cloud, you got to reuse the IT infrastructure. And if your uh, IT is not really very uh, robust, rut row. Did I shut it off? Shut it off. Okay. Operating difficulties, please stand by. Uh, yeah, uh, did it again. Oh, the battery's gone. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. No, we'll look at the battery. That's fine. Now I'll just deal with it. Backhole requirement. 
you don't have a, ro a robust IT network, what's going to happen is your throughput on your emails are going to go down. A lot of your employees are going to complain about how slow their system is operating. Uh, you're also limited by service providers based on whatever eFento uh, or SpiderCloud or whatever. Uh, some uh, like AT and T or Verizon, uh, they might be uh, they may be good candidates. T-Mobile might not be supported, or Sprint might not be supported. Uh, things like that. Your interoperability with the outside system may also be limited. Uh, say uh, handoffs to and from the macro, uh, going from inside to outside, or vice versa. You're going to have a drop call. Interference uh, nearby windows where the macro is penetrating the window and it's competing with the system inside. Then you also have your dashboard vendor point of interface, where, in, say, in our system, you go from 0 to 48, and others, uh, you've either got a high power or a low power card, and, and it varies. And then you have passes that follow after that. Wide range RF interface, that's key here for interoperability between the two systems. And then you've got to look at some of your gains and losses in order to support your full power at your remote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, advantages uh, in terms of uh, small cell itself. Uh, it's a lower cost RF source for small enterprise. Uh, maybe uh, maybe something that would take up an uh, eight remote system. Uh, it's scalable by capacity, so you could add uh, more PCIs to split off, um, split off your Ethernet. Add head -end equipment. It's a fast and easy install. Uh, the optimization is uh, only a couple of buttons. You don't have to deal with pin sweeps. Uh, it does offload capacity from the macro. Uh, power over internet, or ethernet. Uh, there's no local power at the remote unit, so there's no AC required in IDF closets or whatever location. Uh, SpiderCloud's got the uh, club on Wi-Fi uh, with their, uh, their Cisco uh, thing going on there. Uh, you also have improved battery life on your phone, and you may have less interference from, uh, from near far, depending on who's on the system. Now, if you were to take small cell and put that over a gas, again, you're still scalable with, uh, with capacity and coverage, where you would add hand-end equipment, whether that's more small cells, uh, more POIs, to support um, to support your different services or carriers, uh, you can split or regroup your fiber uh, out to your remotes after you add that hand and equipment. You can add other services. Say if you had SpiderCloud, which is AT and T and Verizon, you could add the big T Mobile base station at um, at 60 watts. You could uh, you could add Sprint. You could add Public Safety, VHF, UHF, FirstNet, for example. Your head end is upgradable to higher capacity uh, base station. From that point earlier where I showed the different base stations over on the one side, you can add those in and maintain the same POIs just based on the wide range of input values. You're going to have longer distance on fiber than you are on coax, ethernet, uh, through a passive network. So that allows you to simulcast in multi-buildings, multi campus environments, basements, parking garage, warehouses. And in terms of implementation, once you get by uh, your head end, wherever that is, and you add in your, uh, your various services and RF, uh, then you've got your remotes out here. And the remotes, you know, would just run like a regular gas. I mean, you run that into a splitter, into directional couplers, antennas at drop points on different floors. And if you look at the IV wave, uh, the same thing with uh, with having those remotes. Uh, you would have your coverage out of these points to cover the various floors. So basically, it just demonstrates that these small cell or spider cloud are very interoperable with uh, with traditional DAS, and they can also coexist at the same time. So if you look at some capacity examples, if you were to start out with, uh, with an event over spider cloud at your head end, and you were to feed, say, uh, say one building over here, you run your, uh, you run your RF into the head end here, and then you've got your optical cards, you run your optical out to your remotes. Remotes are going to connect to your antennas and your passives. 
say if you have a campus environment, you have another building, you would run uh, your fiber out to an expansion unit, say in the basement or somewhere, and you would run that into uh, other floors in that building, and again with the passive uh, antenna system on the back end of that. Now, if you were to, uh, if you wanted to add capacity, you could simply add another uh, spider cloud or Ethento or whatever, add another head end piece, get rid of the uh, optical expansion unit, and then you would run that similarly like you have up here in building one, you would run that into uh, building two. Now you've doubled your capacity. And again, if uh, let's say uh, let's say J.P. Morgan was to move into uh, move into this building, and you wanted to add a lot more capacity that wouldn't be supported by Ethernet or by Spider Cloud, you could add uh, you could add a base station, an MRO, MCO, something like that that would bring in a lot more people, and you reuse all your active components here with the here with the DAS. I think I'm doing too good on time here. <laughs> so to, uh, to kind of wrap up on this, uh, the fiberglass is scalable for enterprise uh, capacity and coverage. Uh, it's future-proof. RF is pass-through. Uh, basically, whatever you put into the head end is transported out to remotes. Uh, RF is service agnostic. Um, LTE, uh, if you want to think about uh, back in the amp days. Um, GSM, uh, whatever. Uh, you're scalable by capacity uh, by adding uh, adding PCIs in the uh, small cell situation. You're scalable capacity by migrating your RF source going from small cell into a uh, larger base station. And again, it's perfectly transportable. Your availability among service providers, T-Mobile, uh, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, uh, everyone could come on there. And your fiber could be split. Say if you had an active DAS, you just by adding a head end, you could add more uh, more base station, more uh, more nodes at the head end, split off your fiber, uh, and be selective by floors. Your coax and passives are fixed in the ceilings. So if you were to have an Ethernet and you wanted to migrate over to DAS, you would have to go back and revisit the ceilings, and the landlords and the tenants aren't going to like that. Landlord and tenant aesthetics. You take looking at something like this on the floor versus looking at this, the landlord's going to like that. In fact, some people are still complaining about having antennas exposed on the ceiling. And again, no, uh, no rip or replace of uh, Cat5 if you were to uh, upgrade your capacity or your, or your services. And that's uh, pretty much what I have. Uh, like I said, I think I went way under on my time, but uh, does anyone have any questions? Going once, twice. Okay, thanks everybody for coming on. I appreciate it. <laughs>